Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of Nick Barlow Radiology and today we're going to be looking at Hill Sachs deformity. Some people like to use the term Hill Sachs lesion. Personally I'm not a fan of the, of the word lesion because it implies a sinister pathology. Um, for me I, I would use the term Hill Sachs deformity or defect. But the entity was first described by radiologists Harold Hill and Morris Sachs in 1940, hence the term Hill Sachs. And basically what it refers to is a indentation, a depression fracture of the posterior lateral aspect of the humeral head. Okay, so if we see on, on here, I'll just point to it. We're looking at this section here. Now you see we've got normal cortex coming over the top of the humeral head and then suddenly we see this indent here. And if we look at the bone density of the humeral head, this is normal bone density. We've got a bit of sclerosis there where the bone's impacted on itself. These occur as a result of anterior dislocation of the humeral head. And what happens is when the humeral head dislocates, this section of the head bangs into this inferior part of the glenoid this is a glenoid here and it bangs on this inferior part causing this to bang into it depress and that creates a hill sachs deformity now often with these you get something called a bankart lesion associated with them in fact you're 11 times more likely to get a bankart lesion with hill sachs deformities and a bankart lesion it's the same principle when the humeral head bangs onto this inferior part of the glenoid, it causes an avulsion fracture of that part of the glenoid. So it's always worth looking. If you see this appearance here, this hill sachs deformity, have a look at the glenoid, have a look at the cortex, make sure it's nice and smooth, there's no interruptions, there's no bone fragments there, because that could be a bankart lesion. There is uh, something else to look out for in this x-ray. Sometimes there can be other fractures associated with it, so I'll give you a minute just to, just to think about that, just to see if you can find it on the x-ray. We've also got secondary pathologies here. So we've got some moderate degeneration of the AC joint. So this is the AC joint here, um, the joint between the clavicle and the acromion. And we've got some narrowing of that joint space, some sclerosis, got some white on both sides of the joint there, and maybe some tiny osteophyte formation there. So a little bit about anatomy um, for those who were, who were new to this. So we've got the humerus here with the humeral head. We've got the scapula blade here we've got the glenoid ac joint as i've said you've got the acromium here which is this structure coracoid process which is this little bit coming up here and you've got the clavicle here you've got ribs coming down here and you've got the right lung there so if we have a look in addition those eagle-eyed amongst you may have seen this thin line traversing down the acromion going into the scapula so this is a minimally displaced fracture of the acromion so i suspect that this patient's probably had some high impact trauma because fractures to the acromion and scapula you know these are quite tough structures so usually it takes quite a lot of force to fracture those uh, as opposed to something like the clavicle, which is a bit which is a bit thinner, a bit more easier to fracture. So I suspect that what's happened with this patient is they've had some significant trauma. This humeral head has, has dislocated forwards. It's banged onto the inferior rim of the glenoid, which has caused this hill sachs deformity, but we've also got an associated fracture there the, of the acromion. If we have a look at this second projection, this is called a modified axial projection. So normally you would get the patient to sit down, stretch their arm out, and you would x-ray from the top down. That's an axial projection. These kind of patients are in a lot of pain. They can't necessarily do that position. So what we do is we angle the tube to compensate and try and recreate the projection. So that's why we call it a modified axial projection. But basically, this projection is very, very good for being able to see if there's a dislocation now. Anterior dislocations are easier to see than posterior ones um, on the on the AP view, but posterior ones can be a bit tricky. So axial projections and modified axial help us to determine whether there's been any dislocation. On here, there isn't. You can see the humeral head, it's really nicely aligned with the glenoid there. 
we can see if we just let me just put another error on there you've got your hill sax deformity there you've got your indent to the humeral head and you can also see there you've got a little lucency there at the acromion that's your that's your fracture that we talked about earlier if we just bring up this initial x-ray again, another thing to look out for if there's any associated rib fractures, particularly in high trauma, and rib fractures can be notoriously difficult to spot. Sometimes you can't see them at all on x-ray if they're minimally displaced, they may need a CT for that. But you could also get a secondary pneumothorax as well, guys. So it's important that although we're concentrating on the on the bones of the shoulder, things can hide and uh, and be very, very subtle and they can uh, they can catch us out sometimes so it's always worth just having a look at this lung occasionally you may get things like tumors as well that you that you see on shoulder x-ray so you can invert the image to help sometimes that's good for visualizing the lung and occasionally it can just help these ribs stand out as well and just see if there's any fractures going on there what are the implications with hill sacks deformities well more often than not that you don't really need to do anything with them. If it's a major defect, it may require some kind of bone graft in order to um, correct it. Unfortunately, the patients with hill sacs deformity are more prone to uh, something um, what's called glenohumeral instability. So basically, that means that the ligaments of the shoulder become lax, become damaged, and that can cause recurrent dislocations of the humeral head. And in those patients, they may need surgery in order to correct that. So it's really important that we see the hill sacs deformity because that can be a marker to ligament injury, things that we can't necessarily see on x-ray. Sometimes the patients may go on to have MRI ultrasound imaging, but the hill sacs deformity is a really good mark for it, guys. So hopefully now you'll be able to recognize the x-ray appearances of the hill sacs deformity. Just for your own professional development, I always like to talk about it in terms of the what, when, why, and what next. So what have we learned? Well, we've, we've learned what a hill sacs deformity is. It's a depression fracture of the posterior lateral aspect of the humeral head. When does it occur? It recurs after an anterior dislocation of the humeral head where the humeral head bangs onto that inferior glenoid rim. It can be associated with things like your bank heart lesions and glenohumeral instability. So it's really important to look for secondary signs, other fractures, and also recognize that it may have longer term implications for the patient. As I've said, in terms of patient management, often they don't need treatment, but just consider the fact that they may predispose them to um, glenohumeral instability. So if the patient returns with recurrent dislocations, they may then go on to, to have some surgery. If you want to do some further reading as well, guys, there's a nice case study I found online, which is free by Ifiktar et al. And it's just discussing an anterior dislocation of the shoulder, but with it, there's a nice pronounced hill sacs deformity uh, with an avulse bone fragment so it, it shows both entities so really worth having a look at that guys but uh, but yeah that's that's all we've got time for but hopefully that's a little snapshot of the hill sacs deformity uh, we've talked about x-ray appearances um, other associations and potential implications on patient management if you want me to discuss any specific pathologies on the channel by all means just comment on this video or send me a direct message and i would be more than happy to accommodate uh, and also please guys this is the first video so if you're happy with it drop us a like uh, but also put any comments if it, with regards to image quality or content if you if you think it's too long or too short let me know if you're happy with it equally positive feedback's always good isn't it and uh, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your colleagues. You know, this isn't just for radiographers um, or doctors. It's for student doctors, physios, nurses, anyone with an interest in X-ray interpretation. So the more people we can get involved with these and support it, the more videos I can do. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much. Bye for now.